Well, remember the Voce de Corredora, the voices of the corridor last mm -hmm. week about Roger Toivasashek and this potential contract on the table from the Roosters. It's been the talk of the town all week and there's more chat, JK, because yesterday for Auckland, Roger Toivasashek has moved. Uh, he's, he's in the number 12 jersey, he's named it 12, starts on the wing, plays the game on the wing. What, what do we read into this? A oh, phone call from Fozzie. <laughs> for the coaches, for sure. I know that um, Craig McGrath came out afterwards and said, oh, we wanted him to just relax and enjoy his footy and roam. I mean, firstly, you're playing on the right wing, and I've been out there, and on a wet day, you're not going to get the ball. So that was wrong. Um, also, when players pass from left to right, it's harder for them. So if you're going to play in Rome, go on the left wing. So I just didn't get it. I thought it was absolutely senseless. I mean, here's a guy that's moved, playing, wants to play 12. Um, we've seen him play... 10 minutes of a test match at 12, and then they name him at 12 and put him on the wing. I just don't get it. Someone's had to have called. Hang on, let's go back a couple of steps to something quite pivotal you said in that statement. He wants to play 12. Do you know that for sure, that he wants to play 12? Or no, I have no idea. Was it decided <laughs> that that's the best position for RTS, that that's where they feel he'll be best utilised, and has he been? Yeah, OK, fair enough. But if you, if you played your whole league career at fullback, wouldn't you just say, uh, I, I want to play fullback? <laughs> yeah, possibly. Or you would want to play a position that gives you more time and space. But doesn't There's a lot of congestion with line speed now in around 9, 10, 12. And it doesn't give somebody with the ability of his footwork to line a player up and completely bamboozle him with that lightning step and feet that he's got because he's always getting a player the same time he's getting the ball. So that's my thought process is, yeah, give him some opportunities to play across the field with more space. When he first came in, do you think the All Blacks looked at where there was potentially a gap? And maybe the gap was at 12, not at fullback? Maybe. I, originally, when I, when I... It's always a hard transition, you know, when you look at yeah. guys that come in and they... This is a specialist role, you know, playing at 12. And so when, you know, they, when I heard that the Blues were going to, you know, put him at 12 and things, and things like that, it's really quite a hard, you know position to play because you've got to think about the outside. I suppose it's a little bit different to league. To, to your point, Marsh, he, he wants a little bit of freedom. That's mm. what he gets in league. Fullback and rugby to league is a lot different, you know, also. So perhaps I see what McGrath's saying is, you know, give him a bit of time to really enjoy it. You've got to remember, and, and the thing was, he came into rugby, he was really disruptive because he didn't get an NPC campaign on because of COVID. Then he, you know, straight into the, you know, super rugby campaign. But I would have thought if they were going to persist in him being you know, a 12, you know, put him back out there in 12 and just get him used to, you know, wet conditions, carrying the ball and having enjoyment there rather than relying on your insides to say, well, set me up to give me a little bit of space. I'm not buying it, guys. I'm not buying it. I don't care. I'm because not buying it. <laughs> what what we're also trying this to is say what I reckon, is Marshy. You, what you can't do, and you'll know this from having played wing, that what you can do is also get yourself into the game from counter-attack. Now, look, on a, on a wet evening, it's hard because of the, you know, the conditions getting there. But on a dry day, you can also get... You're not sitting waiting for ball. If you work hard back, you know, someone like Roger Tuivasa-Shek, with, again, his ability and his vision that he brings from rugby league, from coming from fullback or wing, to get his special set of skills into the game because he's going to have time and space on the ball. At 12, you can't get back for counter-attack, can you, Mills? No. Nah. You're in the defensive line. If the opposition kick, you've been up in the face of the kicker. You're not getting back to launch a, a counter-attack. Whereas in the back three, that's basically what being a back three player is. I, I, getting yourself look, into the game. Well, hey, hey, the All Black Test match, he didn't touch the ball once. I'm listening to your reasoning. And he was I on for 12 it. minutes. I get it. I get it. I get it. Right? Yep. But what I'm saying is I don't think that happened. I understand everything you're saying. Mm. But what I think happened is Anton Leonard-Brown is coming back into the All Blacks as a specialist. And they, if he wants to go on that tour, he will need to play two positions. As simple as that. So I think it's a phone call. So does this I'm not disagreeing with you guys. I'm agreeing with the whole theory of playing right. on the wing, loosening up. I don't know with Roger where he wants to play, but we should ask him. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. We, we should. <laughs> what do you think Can about we get to him? SB first came on, on board. Now they, to, to, they played him at 12, but then he had a little stint at wing. You know? I think it just gives, gives him a little bit of freedom to be able to say, well, I'm going to enjoy my rugby. I would have thought it's a massive risk for Alama to say, based on all black coaches, you know, phone call, they're almost going to the quarterfinals to actually name him at 12 first and foremost, mm. but then pop him out to the wing. You know, that's, that's, that's a big call to be able to listen to all black coach, you know, considering... Well, why, why else would you do it? Like, you've named him at 12 and you change him on the morning of the game. Like, you wouldn't do that either. That doesn't make sense either. Mm. I mean, I, don't, I, I, think, I, I think it's positive either way. Like, he had a bad day, but I think that any back nowadays has to play in two positions. 
I get that. Mm. But when I looked at it, and I don't disagree with what you guys are saying technically, because you're both right, but I just don't think it's got anything to do with that. I think he's got to play two positions, and if they're going to take him on the All Blacks, then he might find himself on the wing. If he wants to make the World Cup, you look at all our backs now, right? Who doesn't cover a couple of positions? I mean, Geordie covers three. <laughs> Yeah, he's unique. Well, he That's my more, theory anyway. All apart from halfback, he did say, didn't he? I think he's pretty much across the board, Geordie. But it's an interesting conversation. The guy's a superstar. Yeah. I'm totally. a big fan. I just want to see him... Play. ...be able to play. Yeah. You know? We all like, just want to see him let's play. Let's see him use those skills that he's got that are so unique. Yeah. I would actually like to see his composure under pressure from a test match from the start. I know it's high risk. We're running out of games. Mm. But I'm with you, Marsha. I think he's a superstar. And I reckon if you put him out there... In the tight moments, I reckon he'll do something but for isn't you. isn't that why you should have played him in Auckland as a 12? To pick up those fundamentals of, uh, you know, of a position that's a real specialist rather than... I get it, OK, make him enjoy playing rugby. That's fine, but you've stuck with him and you're, he's an all-black, he's a superstar. Let him pick up some you know, experience in that, in that position at 12, at NPC level, where you can you know, do pick up some of those specialist sort of, um, I suppose, skills in that, in that position. And if, you're gonna ch if, if he was going to choose... Right, let's think about this, and I haven't thought about this till right now, actually. <laughs> um, if, if, you, if he was going to choose, and you are a competitor like him, and he wants to be the starting number in an all-black jersey for the World Cup, which position would you choose at the moment? Yeah. Wouldn't be wing, would it? Will Jordan, the only, Caleb Carr, The only rebuttal Reece. I'm going to offer is, because I know we need to move on, that's cool, is... As a 12, the all-blacks have been massively benefited in the last few test matches by a 12 that can kick. So you've got to be incredibly balanced as that player now. Be a first mm. receiver, be a hard carrier, be a kicking option, uh, and defensively shut down that zone. Of, so you've got to have all those requirements. I'm just wondering whether or not that's too much pressure for a guy that's just trying to find his way and love the game again. don't know. That's my thought process in it. I like to see him out wide. It's a great debate, and sorry, I do just want to throw one other thing out there, um, which I think we need to talk about. Quinta Pyre, originally uh, MCL, out for three months. That has now been upgraded to an ACL surgery and nine months. Absolutely devastated. I think we can all say that for Quinn, because at this stage, that brings him back into rugby three months before the World Cup next year. That changes things, doesn't it, Marshy? Oh, it does, yeah, and, and it's, it's devastating, yeah. because he was just in such a period of momentum. You know, mm. break out a couple of seasons for the Chiefs, deserved his all-black spot, has never let them down when he's got his opportunity in the jersey, and he was taken out illegally yeah. and, and with thuggery. And uh, I felt the sanction um, on Darcy Swain was too light. Uh, I thought he should have got double what he got. Um, and for this poor young kid, he's now going to have to rehab, and these are not easy. Yeah. We wish him all the very best, because obviously... Uh, it's not easy to get back from, oh, is it? And what a, what a, what a waste of a, a year that was happened unnecessarily. Uh, and that's the thing. I think because of the way it happened, yeah. you know, and, and that's why it's so hard, you know, it's difficult to actually... I mean, imagine what, you know, what, what he's going through, Quinn. I mean, the way it was done, and you talk about th thuggery, it was purposely done. Yeah. And to be out like that, he's not a... I mean, his chances are now s slim also, yeah. you know. He's not a, he hasn't been there. He's only been there a couple of years for the All Blacks, so to fight back the way he, he needs to, but... You know, obviously, um, you know, good luck to him in his, in his rehab. But the way it was, I think it's, it's probably harder to take because of the, the way it happened. 